Da Vinci Resolve 19 is finally here and it is incredible. There are so many new tools and abilities that can really elevate your workflow. And today I'm gonna to break down my three personal favorites, the Node Stack Layer, Color Slice, and Film Look Creator. Before we get started, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. So let's begin. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what this Node Stack Layer looks like. Go into your settings, go into your general options, scroll down to where it says node stack layers and you choose however many stacks you want for this for this example i'm choosing two and you get to label them here this is just for your workflow but i think it really helps me and with that out of the way let's get on with the grade so this footage was shot on sony and what i always like to do is i like to work in a wide gamut color space so if i go into my effects here my color space transform right here idt is going to be Da Vinci Y Gamma and Da Vinci Intermediate for the output. And if I go into my look dev, my ODT is right here. And these are my settings for it. And I like to do my saturation compression as well. So in regards to the look itself, I want to create this by strictly using these new tools that Vinci has created for us. But the first thing I want to do is I want to create a soft S curve. So that way we are lifting those shadows and presenting a more authentic cinematic contrast. So I went into my contrast node here, created a soft S curve with some minor tweaks to lift and gamma. And this is what I got. Let me actually zoom in before, after. As you can see, we're not sacrificing any detail in the highlights, but we are definitely lifting those shadows a bit and the mid-tones are looking pretty good. Now let's move on to the second tool, which is Film Look Creator. Now, unfortunately, this is only available for the studio version, but the studio version, in my opinion, is absolutely worth it. And for US currency, I think it's roughly $300 if I remember correctly. So. We obviously have our settings here, but I'm going to break them down individually. But before I do, let's see what the final results are. So this is before and after. As you can see, this is a massive push. And I am really happy with what the final results are and what Film Look Creator can actually do. Now, this isn't the final look because we also have our color slice tool that we're going to explain later on. But for right now, let's break down the Film Look Creator. So the first thing I want to point out is you have these presets here. You have your custom, you have your default 65 millimeter, 35 millimeter cinematic and bleach bypass, etc. You have your uh, overrides here, but since I'm already in a DaVinci wide gamut color space, I'm not going to touch this. But then you have your color settings. You have your exposure, your contrast, highlights, but you also have fade, skin bias, subtractive sat, and richness. And you even have a slider for bleach bypass. Now, these are my settings, but let me show you individually what they do, because exposure this time acts differently than how your regular exposure works in your primaries. It feels more controlled, similar to the HDR palette offset. But for right now, I'm going to bring it back to negative 0.33. Maybe even bring it up a bit to 0.19. I'm looking at his face. I want to bring his exposure up just a little bit. And I obviously have my contrast slider. Like that. You have your highlights. But what I really like about this is the fade. You have that. And that. It lifts those shadows to be kind of flat but it's also quite cinematic as well. So I'm gonna bring it back to here. And you know what, maybe even find a balance of maybe right here. Yeah, something like that. I didn't touch the white balance or the tint, but then you also have your skin bias. Skin bias, when, you're, when it's pushed to the left, it's pushed towards warmth. To the right, it's pushed more towards cool. For this, I wanted to keep it somewhere around here because I also like what it's doing to that background. Yeah, something like that. Then you have your subtractive set and richness. The richness provides some density while the subtractive set pushes for overall saturation. Now, the next thing I use, and this is a very powerful tool, is split toning. For my split toning here, I wanted to 
change the amount to... I brought the amount up to here. Shifted my hues. Because I didn't want this to be too green or too magenta. So I kept it somewhere around here. And I pivoted it more towards here. More towards that green or cyan. Because if I pivoted even further, it would have been very green and I didn't want that. But if I pushed it all the way to here, it would have been too blue. Somewhere around here, I am happy with. Yeah, it's good. Create a vignette because I wanted them to stand out while bringing this down a bit. And it also feels very, very natural. Now for my halation, I'm going to zoom in a bit so I can show you what it's doing. Now, what I really like about this halation effect, it actually feels very authentic. You have your amount right here, and you have your radius, basically showing how, how far it pushes out. And then you have your hue. I brought up here because it's closer to red. I didn't want it to be orange like this, even though it kind of blends very well. But I still wanted the halation to be visible. So I brought it to here. Maybe increase the radius a bit, decrease the amount. Because I still want the halation to, to blend, but I want it to be a different color than the light. So let me zoom back out. Do before and after. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. I did a slight bloom effect to take those edges off, so let me just do before and after again. Yeah. It blooms everything, it's pretty nice. Then you have your film grain. And you have your you have your presets here. You have a 65 millimeter, 35 millimeter, etc. I used my 35 millimeter and I adjusted these settings with the softness, brought the saturation down from 0.3 all the way down to zero. But you also have your image defocus, which is pretty neat. So if I go into my so if I zoom in again. bring this all the way down that really blurs it out so let me bring it back to 0.8 looking pretty nice i didn't do anything with flicker or gate weave i didn't really like it that much but now you have your film gate which is these which is the letter box here and your presets consist of 35 millimeter silent which looks like this 35 millimeter academy visit vision don't know if i said that right you have your 16 millimeter and this which is more of a modern cinematic look but for me i wanted a super eight millimeter it's just my preference but yeah hopefully that broke down everything that film look creator has to offer again it's only available in the studio version but it's totally worth it Is this going to be, is this really going to take over a lot of colorists' workflow in regards to film look creation? Probably. But it still requires a colorist to know their image, know what they're going for, and if split toning can't create that look that they're going for, well, then they're going to have to go back to his but they're going to then they're going to have to resort to the using but if split toning isn't going to do the job but if split toning isn't going to do the job for creating that look you want to go for then there is no problem at all with going back to your primaries if anything you have more control over your image if anything, you have more control over your image with your primaries than you do with this. But this is a very powerful tool and you guys should definitely experiment with it. Now moving on to my final tool that I wanted to talk about is Color Slice. Color Slice can be found here. It's a new native tool. You don't need the studio version for this one. And to me, this is also quite powerful, especially when it comes to your printer lights and if you want to attack certain colors and leave others alone. So this is what I got. Why I wanted to experiment with this was I wanted to create deeper luminance, deeper density and saturation with these colors and just see what happens. 
as you can see i adjusted my yellows my skin tones my reds but also my cyan and blue and this is what i got i love what it's doing to the background what it's doing to the wall what's doing to his jacket so let me break it down so for my cyan for example you have this tab here and you have this tab here this tab is your luminance this is going to express how deep the density is going to be for your cyan and this right here is your saturation how much of it is going to be there if i bring it all the way down it looks terrible if I bring it back up to where it should be, we're pushing that much saturation. Same thing with this. If I go into my skin right here, because this is sitting close to where the skin should be in the color wheel right here, I brought the luminance down here because if I brought it all the way up, that background is not looking good at all. So let me bring it back down to negative 30 to negative 0.3. bring my saturation down and then compare it then you find that middle ground which i found to be somewhere around here i like that a lot so yeah color slice is a very powerful tool when it comes to selecting certain color schemes and changing the luminance and saturation of them separately from everything else creating an image like this that is very deep in saturation but also deep in color density and with that said, that breaks down my favorite tools that DaVinci Resolve 19 has put out. Experimenting with Resolve 19? Please let me know in the comments which tool is your favorite. And guys, that brings us end to today's video. I hope I did my best to really sell you on these tools because I think that they are quite powerful. If you want to see more videos of me using this film look creator, let me know in the comments below. And once again, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.